I'm Matt. And I'm Nate. And this is Not Quite Religious, a podcast where a Christian pastor and a former evangelical turned atheist have conversations about faith, religion, philosophy, and life while drinking coffee. Uh, welcome to episode nine, where we're going to talk about the problem of evil, which incidentally Matt doesn't think is a problem. And I will say in my worldview, I don't necessarily think it's a problem either. Well, it's an existential problem. Sure. It's not a um, theological problem. It's it's yeah, it's not a logical problem. Yeah. Um, so real quick, uh, I normally don't have two cups of coffee and I did today. So we'll see how fast I start talking <laughs> as we go. And uh, we should give a shout out to our coffee roast. Yeah, let's do it again. Uh, Chameleon Coffee from Austin, Texas, uh, the Guatemala roast. I rated it uh, previously a, a 7.5, but uh, I, I'm i going to bump it up to an 8. Yeah. Like a, a slightly over 8. Um, it was a little hasty. Can't just take two sips and be like, oh, it's a seven. Yeah. You know, so now I drank the full cup and I'm like, this is good. I think it's better than Omar. Um, I don't think it was as good as... Mocha Joe's? Yeah, Mocha Joe's. Um, I also, for those of you listening who are like, rate again. Uh, this is the second episode we recorded today, yeah. but it's the first one we're releasing. Thanks, Nate. So so if you want to listen in chronological order... You should pause, wait till next week, and <laughs> listen to episode. <laughs> the coffee gets worse, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> so Matt is repenting for his future comment about chameleon organic <laughs> coffee. Um, one other qu- quick observation for those who don't know. We record the intro fresh every week, and I'm surprised when I listen how spot on it. It sounds like it's pre-recorded and we cut it in, but... <laughs> I think for some reason we're both pretty consistent in how we say our names and the title and everything else. That apparently I have a good radio voice, and so it just it's it so- works. soft and silky. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so problem of evil. Fifty minutes. We're gonna solve this, and um... <laughs> so uh, I think one of the reasons we decided to start this topic today is. Um, we're recording the day after um, the tragedy in Texas. Two days after. Two days after. Two days. Um, as well as a week after um, a report from the Southern Baptist Convention about uh, sexual abuse scandals that um, rival what the Boston Globe broke on the Catholic Church 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, And so I Facebook messaged Matt last two nights ago, and I was like, so what are we talking about? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Sexual predators or um, kids dying in a very tragic and gruesome way? Um, So it's going to be a a fun, lighthearted episode. Yeah, I just, I felt like, like we we mostly stick to the abstract and not the the way too personal. Yeah. And I, th- I think we don't want to become just a, like another podcast that commentate or comments on every, yeah on every political thing, but like some things that happen transcend politics in, mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. Um, it's political. Obviously we could, we could sit here and talk about um, our opinions on gun regulation all day, but I think we actually agree. And I don't think that'd be that interesting of a conversation. Um, uh, and we and we we could talk about you know mass shootings and and what we think government should do, but uh, be beyond all besides all that, uh, it would I just felt like it would be weird to not even to not even mention it. Uh, that would have been weird to, to yeah. not uh, to not address it at all and just act like it didn't didn't happen and it doesn't pertain because it does pertain to what are what our normal conversations are about, which is like, uh, so there's this claim that God is all powerful and that God is all good. And yet we live in a world where mass shootings happen. Yeah. And we, and we, and we have a whole denomination, the Southern Baptist convention, which is the largest denomination in the United States of America, a scandal, the size of what the Boston globe broke with the Catholic church. And they have, you know, these claims to believe in this all powerful, all good, God and and yet um and yet our 
obviously not not exempt from grave uh, evil. Yeah, and and so it brings up the topic that we're covering in this episode, um, which is the problem of evil. Which is a problem if if you it's a problem because you because logically you can't say that God is all knowing and all good. And also the all powerful creator and um and yet there's uh there's suffering, or at least it seems like you can't say that logically, yeah, and you know I want to just uh reaffirm that we're we're doing this in the wake of some tragedies, but I think we do we do try to keep politics and and things out of it, so um if that's what you're looking for, this isn't the place where we are gonna delve more into the abstract, which maybe will help. Um, and what I mean by that is like some living in the present sometimes really sucks. <laughs> yeah. Um, and being able to escape and t- talk philosophy or physics or theology for me is a way that, um, I kind of escape. Right. Um, and also I want to bring this up cause I don't know if it's brought up a lot in debates on the problem of evil. Usually when I watch debates, um, on the problem of evil, it is a Christian, usually William Lane Craig. <laughs> or some of his disciples who are trying to say, um, who are trying to defend from attacks of atheists or other religions um, and trying to say that there, this good God can coexist with the problem of evil. So the problem of evil is the atheist saying, like, y- you are, your burden of proof is on you and your God, your religious um, construction is wrong because there's evil. I think as I've got more nuanced and started listening to people who aren't just Hitchens debating William Lane Craig or Dawkins or like the big names in both on both sides, there's in some ways there's not a problem of evil within atheism because what you should expect from a universe that is chaotic and random um, and full of predation is that things kill other things. Um, but I think where, where there is a problem with evil within atheism is, and, and Christians will often, uh, some Christians will bring this up, um, is what well, I can't really call it evil because if it's just natural, like I don't think a cheetah strangling a gazelle, um, is evil. I don't think a pack of hyenas or wild dogs eating a wildebeest while it's alive, which is horrible. Like you, you watch like the nature documentaries and like a tiger killing something. It's like pretty quick and efficient. Wild dogs take down a wildebeest and they rip its stomach open while it's alive and eat its internal organs first. So very much like, um, Mel Gibson playing William Wallace and Braveheart. So using the word savage to describe memes <laughs> is a gross understatement. That's what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so there shouldn't be a problem of evil in an atheist worldview. Like if I started eating your internal organs while you're alive, well, that's just natural. Like dogs do it. Um, so there is that natural for you. (laughs) I don't know. It was that Indiana Jones where they ripped the heart out, but, uh, but my point proved you had to, you had to uh, appeal to a movie. So I think there is that, I don't know if we're going to get into that side. And I think that probably is a whole other episode. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe we will. So, and now we're like 20 minutes in, so we only have 50 more minutes. To... <laughs> um, interesting. Nate, you sent, me a, you sent me a podcast last night that I listened to on my yeah. drive down. And uh, I thought the, uh, the atheist made some really interesting points. And one, one of the points that he, w- he was making is, um, so he wasn't going as far as to say that uh, the, the savagery of, of nature and, and predation uh, had a had, you know he wasn't a, he wasn't uh, applying to it a moral quality of evil but what he what he was saying is that the point that he was making is if I were God and I were designing a system or a simulation and I was supposedly good and all knowing I, I I had the power to design a simulation and I noticed in my simulation that uh, these savage things would happen I I would as that as that world's God. Uh, do things to correct that, mm-hmm. and so the Christian the Christian view of God as designer and creator, 
he's basically saying, um, you know, it, it's asking the question, from my vantage point, he's asking the question, well, what do you mean by good? Because the world that exists that God created is um, is violent and yeah. and savage. So how does that how does that work with uh, with you know with with a good God? I think I think it, I think it's a good question. Uh, I I think that uh, oftentimes though, well, here's the other interesting thing. The it was fascinating to me that the theists response to that. Uh, and you could give that this podcast a shout out uh, if you want. I can't remember the name of Counter- it. Counter apologetics. Yeah, um, counter apologetics. But the theist's response to that was that the atheist couldn't explain consciousness, and the atheist said, "Well, you're changing the subject." Yeah, which proves that his his argument is actually a compelling argument. Is the the problem of teleological evil is a problem for theists not atheists yeah the problem for atheists is the question of consciousness and that's where i find myself going when i'm talking about atheism and and uh the problem in this case with the theist was that he was changing the subject but if the subject is broader atheism versus theism that's where i would go ultimately is is consciousness because the god that you're describing is basically like could be thor could be zeus and um that's not at all my conception of of God or what God is or who God is. So it's a category error in a way. Yeah, and I actually – so I think you know when you hear debates on the problem of evil, both sides kind of come out in the wash when, it, when we're talking about the, the problem of evil within humanity. Although I think – I'm going to get to why obviously I don't think it's a wash. But that podcast that I sent you specifically was talking about the problem of animal suffering. Yeah. So with humans, you're going to say, well, there's free will. Well, mm-hmm. there's this, there's that. Like, um, with animal suffering, there is no heaven. So there's no redemption of your pain and suffering, right? Um, and some animals are killed in very gruesome ways. Lots of, mo- most animals are killed in lots of gruesome ways. They die mm-hmm. very, like, it's, you know, like Hobbes said, nature is nasty, brutish, and short. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't get to go to a hospital surrounded by their loved ones. Yeah, uh, and take medicine. have morphine and right. yeah, um, you know they're they're getting ripped open. They're and they're left to or or they you know yeah. starve to death, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> freeze to death, get stuck in mud and you know uh-huh. suffocate. Like none of those sound pleasant. No, um, and so you have this universe that was created potentially. That set up all this suffering. Mm-hmm. Um, right. <laughs> I think that is a very strong argument against an all-powerful, all-good, all-knowing God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I agree with that. And some of you will be disappointed that I'm just, like, agreeing. So... Maybe I'm changing. Maybe I'm changing the subject at this point. We can get back on track if you want to. My response to that is that I think a honest, cor- I'll say correct way of handling scripture. We talked about this, I think, in episode two as well. Is that even the Bible, especially the Old Testament, um, questions the goodness of God? And invites us, invites us to wrestle with the problem of evil. That's what the Book of Job is. Yeah, is an, an invitation. With, with, without, without a real like solid conclusion, and I think it's dangerous if you take a solid conclusion f- from Job. And I can I, I can explain why or, or, or not. But like, in the um, the the Catholic activist. Um, Part of the Catholic Workers Movement, I think Daniel Berrigan, a poet, uh, had a brother named Philip. Both of them were anti-war activists in um, the '60s and, and ended up in jail mo- multiple times. But they held to their, uh, or at least Daniel did, held to their Catholic uh, faith or identity. Um, it said something in a book that I, I got a, f- uh, a few years ago that he that, that Daniel Berrigan wrote on this the Psalms. 
and 